Eric Lang co-stars in the Netflix limited series Unbelievable as Detective Robert Parker, uh, who investigates a rape case and uh, wrongly dismisses it as a false report. Uh, well, first off, had you been familiar with uh, the true story behind uh, Unbelievable before uh, taking the role? I hadn't. Uh, no, I wasn't. No. Um, but after reading the uh, the ProPublica article uh, written by, by Ken Armstrong and, and T. Christian Miller, I was... I was shocked that I hadn't. It really, um, it did feel like it was almost impossible that something like that could happen. And uh, what did you, when you were reading the script for the first time, uh, what do you think about, you know, especially that first episode uh, is so so grueling about the experience of, of Marie, the character played by Caitlin Deaver. Uh, what, what were you thinking about, you know, the character uh, that you were playing uh, and the, uh, just the circumstances uh, of, of, of what that investigation turned to and what he did sort of to almost re-traumatize her during that situation. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, early in the research, I found out um, a lot about him, most of which was that he, he had worked in the in narcotics most of his career. He had very little experience with, with uh, sex crimes, and uh, this police station had very little experience with it. They had no sex crimes unit. Um, so to watch him sort of, uh, to read this script knowing this, that there's an inherent sort of ignorance um, there, and, and, and uh, not without a little responsibility as well, because sex crime specialists have developed literature that, that's been sent out to all police departments that, that talk about how to handle people um, in potential rape cases. And, and they say, you know, you shouldn't expect that they might be hysterical. They might be completely calm. There might be no signs of trauma physically. Um, they might have difficulty remembering any details. Uh, that, that that's all typical and that you should never use a lie detector test um, on someone in this state. And so these guys walked right through um, all of those no-nos and, uh, and really, uh, really screwed it up. I guess what was interesting to me uh, about him uh, from the first episode during the interrogation where it's pretty, uh, it's pretty difficult, I guess the one part of that was about all the gray in there, that, that these guys are, are trained to sort of look for facts and to make movements and arrests uh, based on these facts, not on feelings, or not on um, the great emotion they're sometimes visited by. And sort of sit opposite Caitlin and the superb job she was doing um, handling all of this. Uh, the idea was to try and keep a poker face going, uh, but at the same time, because of where he goes in the script, um, which is by the end of the show, he you know he he makes amends with her. He he or well, he attempts to he he comes to her and apologizes um, to also somehow feel a bit of what she was feeling, um, but not let it guide any any of his uh, decisions. So it was a really complicated um, pilot. Um, we were in that interrogation room for a long time, and the cameras were very close like here, you know, to give us this feeling of claustrophobia that, that she must have had. And, 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 and that was Lisa Cholodenko, who was another reason that I wanted to be involved in this. She's a superb director. So um, I hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, you, uh, the fact that you're playing a character who is inspired by real characters, does that sort of affect your approach to it? Does it feel more uh, sort of more pressure to kind of uh, be true to these circumstances and to, to this story, even though the character you're playing isn't necessarily where our sympathy lies in those scenes? Uh, yeah, I've, I've done this many times now, played, played real people, and, and, um, and sometimes they're more famous than others. Sometimes these people are well known, and, and so to that end, you have an obligation to sort of match that. Um, I don't know that many people um, are aware of what uh, the actual detective uh, sergeant actually looks like. So we had some liberties um, within that. I get, you know, I, I there was an, a, a mention of him several times in the in the ProPublica article um, that Marie said that when she came for her apology to the police station, that that he walked out with his hands on his face. And, and she said he looked like a little lost puppy, you know. And um, when I talked to uh, Ken Armstrong about his interview with um, Jeffrey Mason, who, Sergeant Jeffrey Mason, who was the actual uh, detective I was playing, he said he asked him, you know, 
do you still think about Marie? And he said he took this incredibly long pause, much longer than a, any detective might normally take. And then he asked to be excused um, and walked out of the room and, and broke down in the hallway. Um, so I guess from that, I can take that this guy has this heart. And it really was one of the um, things that drew me to the whole thing, the idea that this guy was going to try and go full circle and say, hey, I, 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 I'm going to come back and own this and apologize for, for uh, really treating you like the criminal instead of the victim. And um, his move to do that, uh, unlike his partner who, who declined to do that, uh, is one of the things I respect about him the most. Um, and, you know, in this, in this era of police brutality and, and, and this magnifying glass that's been put on the, the police system, I, I, I have to admire, you know, when, when that humanity is able to come through you know, the other side of that poker face and, and uh, he can give something back, at least some some attempt. Yeah, and it is a fine line you walk because your character isn't uh, isn't a heroic character, but he's also not uh, not not doing deliberate harm, even though he is and does end up doing harm. Uh, and it's such a fine line, like th that scene where where he's realizing that he's made a terrible mistake. You know, Marie was telling the truth and than what he did to her after that. Uh, what was it like playing just those realization scenes? Um, yeah, that was that was one of the toughest things I've done to uh, to just stare at a computer screen. Um, they did give me pictures to to look at to sort of guide that that awakening that happened. Um, but I found that incredibly difficult to do, and and it seems so, so simple. Um, I was happy with it when I when I watched it back because I think it does sort of encompass that that gut drop he must have experienced when he realized like he had he made such a a tragic error, um, and uh, you know there's he he does go to the the uh, go kart track to to confront her that scene was incredibly difficult to say you know we found the guy and and it's not you know you you were uh, actually raped and. Um, the toughest part for me was the fact that he charged her. He still went on to charge her for, um, for filing a false police report. Uh, and, and that his view at the time was that, you know, this took resources, this took hours and man hours and, and it's a law and you broke it. And so, um, it's, it's like the other side of the, the, the part of him that has a bit of heart and humanity is this, is this guy who's following the rules. Um, so it is, it's, it's, it was a very um, gray, you know, is the best way I could describe it. It was always sort of, you know, walking the lines of, of this is what you do, this is protocol, and also allowing someone to be moved by the fact that this young girl has, has been truly, you know, traumatized. And, and you are with her during her most vulnerable uh, period of, of, of life, you know. And uh, the, the story of the of the miniseries is structured in an interesting way, where uh, you know the the Marie uh, storyline and, and that investigation happens sort of in parallel to uh, uh, Tony Collette and the Weaver storyline, where they're investigating these crimes and they discover they're connected. Uh, what was it like watching it back to see your part of the story in in that larger context, uh, in a way that the detective really, uh, uh, you know, the sergeant never really got to see in real life that. Uh, how everything was happening parallel to him. Yeah, I guess that was kind of interesting because we we were always sort of on our own track, and um, and it wasn't until quite late when they actually he comes to the station to their station in, in Denver, and I have that that uh, scene with Tony Collette where she's basically where I'm basically saying I, I look I'm sorry I can't believe I, I screwed up this badly, and she sort of gives me the cold shoulder. There's there is time they had had shooting and bonding, and I was kind of an outsider to that. So that that worked fairly well. Um, and, and and to watch them all sort of meld their resources, and for him to witness yet again how little was put into it and how much they had put into it. The one interesting side note, I guess, is when um, when this whole first started, and they they talked to to both these female detectives about you know their hopes for the show and what would they want to see in the show? One of them said, what I don't want you to do is treat those original two cops like monsters. Um, they made a mistake and we all make these mistakes. And again, I thought it was really big of them to, 
to say it's very easy for these people, and it's easy to play this guy as a monster. Um, but I, I don't think that's as effective as, as someone you see the humanity through, you see the vulnerability of um, from time to time. And, and uh, I thought it was really classy of her to say, like, that's too easy to just call them monsters. Like, these are fallible human beings, and, and all of us are that, that work in law enforcement to one degree or another. Yeah, I definitely agree with that in the sense that, uh, you know, seeing him as a monster would make it very easy for the audience, too, to look at that person and say, like, oh, I'm not like him. I would never be like him and treat her that way. Uh, that gray area sort of allows the, the audience to maybe identify with the police officers. Like, is this a thing that I might have done? Is this a person I might have doubted? And how would I have treated them? Uh, what, what do you think someone should take away, what would you like them to take away, seeing your character and maybe maybe identifying with them. Maybe there's someone who would look at uh, someone like Marie behaving how she behaves and doubt her and dismiss her. You know, I feel like, and I've thought this a lot recently too with all the, the footage we're seeing of the police, it's a job I don't want. Uh, I would never want to be in that that position. It's, it's um, a tremendous amount of responsibility and pressure and, and um, but I feel like if that is your job, then it is your obligation to do everything you can to do it well. And, uh, you know, in, in this regard, um, there was uh, literature that was made available that could have taught them, helped them through this interrogation with her um, and, and, and been meaningful for her, but, but uh, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't utilized. So, uh, you know, I, I've gotten a lot of people who've written and said, you know, it, they, they even teared up a little bit, you know, when he comes back to say he's sorry, because you see, he is just a guy, you know, who's, um, who's capable of making the wrong uh, decisions. But at the end of the day, I think we have to hold uh, law enforcement to a higher standard. And, um, and it's not just that he, he ordered too much, you know, printer paper at the office. It's, you know, he, he really ruined a chunk of someone's life. And, and, somewhat i'm sure permanently damaged her for forever so it's um it's a great responsibility and it needs to be treated as such and uh you know you mentioned how it was sort of helpful in the scene with tony collette that you were kind of the outsider in that scene um and you know but you know that that is also maybe one of the downsides of playing a role like this is you don't get to work as much with tony collette or merrick weaver and that great cast on that other side of the storyline uh, do you ever find yourself wishing that you know that you, you can sort of be a part of that other side and get to work with all those uh, other great uh, performers and, and those great characters. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, Merritt Weaver and, and Tony Collette, I mean, I'm, I've been a fan of for, for years for both of them. And just such a, the cast all around was just so beautifully put together. Um, uh, yeah, I, I felt, I felt a bit the outsider, but you know, it was, um, it was necessary and, and it did kind of help me, you know, to go to that that station for the first time and stand over the table at all the stuff they had amassed and, and uh, to just really feel like uh, not part of the club um, was helpful, I guess, as much as I was wanting to be a part of the club from the, the beginning. But um, yeah, it's uh, I'm really proud to be a part of the thing. It made such a splash and, and rightly stirred a lot of conversation. And, uh, and I hope it continues the conversation. I hope it's use, useful as a tool going forward for police stations, victims, and, and everyone else who's just um, on this side of uninformed, you know. Uh, you have a very different uh, crime drama coming up soon this summer, uh, Perry Mason, uh, you're appearing in, uh, which is a, a very different animal, of course, based on the, 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 the novels uh, about, you know, that inspired the original series. Uh, what was it like going into that and, and, and that sort of period uh, storyline and uh, that sort of classic uh, material too? Oh, that was so much fun. Um, yeah, because it's a period piece, and uh, and what an incredible cast! And it's Matthew Reese and John Lithgow and Shay Wiggum and Tatiana Masolny, and I just I could go on. It's an incredible um, show, uh, and uh, and yeah, another detective, um, and another possibly sketchy one. Um, but it was such a lot of fun to do. Um, one to shoot something in LA was was really really nice um and the CLA sort of 
you know, turned over the, the, the period and, and um, the cool suits and the guns and all that stuff. It's been, it was a lot of fun. And I, and I, you know, what I've seen of it is just gorgeous. The cinematography is beautiful. And, and um, I, I think people are going to love it. I can't wait to, to see it myself. I haven't seen it yet. Well, uh, congratulations on Unbelievable and on Perry Mason coming up, um, and uh, best of luck in this strange world that we've found ourselves in in so many different ways right now. Um, and, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Hey, good to see you too.